Hey guys, Mike here. So yes, just like the thumbnail said, you can pour concrete right over brick. Today we're doing a big stamp concrete patio right over this old brick patio. And whether it's brick or concrete, you can pour right over it. As long as the as long as the existing sub base here, which is brick, is sound, it's in good shape, it's not settling or heating, it's perfectly fine to pour right over it. Now we're pouring four inches of concrete, 4,000 PSI with fiber mesh right over this. We decided not to use any wire or rebar because I got to drive that power buggy over it. And the patio here, it's about 880 square feet. It's all locked in on all sides. So it's not going to go anywhere. It's not going to settle. Um, it's not going to heave. So we're going to saw a lot of contraction joints in it to control the cracks. So the concrete's not going to go anywhere. The fiber mesh is going to be plenty reinforcement for this. Now we're going to do a stone texture stamp on this, so make sure you stay to the end to see what this looks like. It came out looking really, really nice. And I want to know, after you see what the final product looks like, if, if, you, would have looked, if you would have used that stone texture stamp yourself, or if maybe you would have chosen a different pattern, I want you to let me know down in the comments here. So i got to use that power buggy. I'm going all the way around the front of the house into the driveway to get the concrete so it's quite a little trip each time I go which means Darren and Luke here they gotta pretty much pour the patio all by themselves because uh, I mean I, I just can't help them I gotta keep the concrete moving we want it this is early early in the morning it's like 6 30 in the morning you can see most of it's in the shade right now we want to try to get this thing in here because it's gonna be all in direct sunlight when we start stamping and we know that especially up against the building where the sun's radiating off the building that the edge of that is going to set up really quickly on us so we're going to be moving we got three drains where we're working around here on this patio so is there's not much of it that is level it slopes about two and a half inches away from the house and we're trying to make it slope to each one of these drains also you can kind of see the white iso strip we use in the background it kind of dips down here and there and that's where a drain is so the, the rain water will just go into the drain and, and you know outside the wall there this is a big there's a big wall on the outside of that and then down below to get rid of the water the access here was kind of tough too basically the only access we have is right where I'm driving the power buggy in which you'll see here in a minute and then to get to the other side where we started when we start stamping, we're going to have to walk around by that railing on top of the wall. Yeah, now you can see the access. So it was a little tricky when we go to start stamping, but we got to get this thing poured first. It took about 11, I think it was around 11 to 12 yards of concrete. Here. We're using a 3-8 stone. I like using the smaller size aggregate when we stamp. I just think it makes it a little easier to press the stamps into the surface. But in Maine here, we always use a 4,000 PSI on our exterior concrete. And we have, if you've listened to any of my other videos, you know I always use a water reducer to help keep the strength up. And then we also have air entrainment in our concrete too. And that just really helps with the freeze and thaw cycles we have here in Maine. Yeah, we put the last form up there. He's gonna, this guy's gonna end up completely redoing the landscaping out here and back. So this was like the first part of it he wanted to do. And then on the outside of that brick retaining wall, he's gonna redo everything else also. So the pour's in. We're, you know, probably about an hour after the pour. The concrete's setting up pretty good. Now I'm getting on it with my knee boards because the access really isn't good enough for anything else and I'm going to just mag float the surface out, make sure I get it to where I like it just before we start stamping. And that's all I need to do to kind of prep the surface before we start stamping the concrete. Luke's over there, he's got his first stamp ready to go. We're going to use a charcoal release on this. And then just the simple stone texture stamps. We have a couple different types of stamp, but the texture on them is, is very similar. 
those big mats are really really nice you know if you're learning if you're wanting to learn how to stamp this is the pattern to use right here I also got my stamp concrete course down in the con uh, down in the uh, directions below guys so if, if you're looking to learn how to stamp concrete just check that out below the link is there you can go check that out and I teach you the basics of learning how to stamp concrete just like what we're doing right here you can see I got the big red ones and then I got some smaller blue ones that we use it just helps break up the patterns a little bit now Luke's gonna go down the right down the edge of the building because when the sun hits a building like that it just sets up the concrete a little faster right up against the edge of the building than it does you know four or five feet out away from it so you gotta make sure you get that edge by the building done or it's just gonna set up too fast on you we're gonna pressure wash and power wash everything the next day so after we get it stamped today we'll let it sit we'll come back the following day and we'll clean everything off and if we get any of that release on something you know it comes right off with some dawn dish detergent and some water a little scrub brush it, it'll take it right off you can see Luke's kind of going around the corner getting that edge done while Darren's just working his way from one end to the other really could use a few more stamps here on this job it would would have made it a little bit more convenient for us but this is the basic process when you stamp and you know this is about 880 square feet with basically three of us I mean two of us two of them guys have been out there for most of it now I'm gonna jump back but out in the Sun on top of a on top of a like a brick sub base here uh, this is a, you, you wouldn't want to do much more than this so I'm gonna get the edge roller and I'm gonna finish that edge off for Luke and then I'm gonna jump right on there with him and, and we're gonna get this thing stamped now I came back about a month after and I shot a little, just a walkthrough video. This is what you're going to see at the end of what it looks like. And then I snapped a couple pictures. So you can see the detail in the stamps really, really good. You can see how that charcoal release agent really leaves a nice antiquing effect on the concrete as far as color goes. The concrete also had integral color in it. We used what's called a, a gull gray. It just helps keep the concrete a little grayer than normal. If you don't put color in concrete, it turns, when it cures out, it turns kind of white, I think. So in order to keep it a little bit darker gray, you got to actually add gray to it. You wouldn't think so, but you do. And we get asked to stamp a lot of concrete during the year. I don't, I don't take every stamp job I get asked to do. It's just we could stamp concrete literally every day and it really takes a toll on your body if that's all you do you guys out there who do a lot of stamp concrete you know what I'm talking about it's a lot of work but it's rewarding work you know when you're done and you see the finished product and how how nice it looks it's it's very satisfying to the installers like us And what we're hoping to do is satisfy the homeowners too so you know we really like to hear feedback from the homeowners if they if they really like what it looks like that, that makes it nice for us now we're getting over to the edge you see there's a little bit of shade over there on that right so that kind of helped us out a little bit we got over there the concrete was just right it wasn't too hard wasn't too soft because the whole process from start to finish here you know you're talking about 45 minutes or so to get from one end to the other so on something this size so you really got to be moving if you wait too long, if you're too slow, by the time you get down to the, the end here, the concrete's just going to be hard and you're not going to get much of a pattern in the surface. Now some of you guys might have said, well, you probably should have removed that brick. And, you know, 
like I said earlier in the video, the brick was solid. There was nothing wrong with it other than the homeowner just wanted to change the look of it. It wasn't settled. It wasn't heaved. It's When you pour over brick or concrete like that, that's in good shape. It's really not any different than a very hard packed, well compacted gravel sub base. I mean, really, what's the difference? So you can pour right over it. He had all the height in the world to bring this up four inches, so it didn't affect any doorways. Um, it didn't really affect the step up you see right there because he's going to redo all the landscaping on the outside. So he can bring his landscaping up to match that. He could leave it down, you know, a seven inch step if he wanted to. But pouring over brick or pouring over concrete is perfectly fine. Just, you know, as long as it's in good shape. So we're going to finish up the stamp here and make sure you let me know when you see the finished product if you would have used this stamp, if you like this stamp, if you like how it came out. Or if you would have used a different pattern here, what your favorite pattern is. Also, you know, down in the in the down below, I have a link to the Concrete Underground where you can learn how to do concrete like us in my private training. So if you want to get private training from us, you know, check out the link to the Concrete Underground. But the video, the video coming up of the walkthrough of the finished product is is going to be right here guys so this is going to be me just finishing up the last little piece we what we're doing is we're carrying the stamps over where we can pressure wash them and clean them right up for the next job i'm going to finish off this last little piece you can see i didn't have to pound too hard with my feet because the concrete was just the right texture now here's the finished product like i said this is about a a month later i came back homeowner had all his stuff back on it you can see all the detail of that stamp in there with that stone texture. It's really, really nice. And then the, the darker black is the release agent. So we washed off 90% of it and a little bit of it left, and that's what it came out to look like. So let me know down in the comments, guys, if you like this or not. And thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.